Okay, now let's figure out how we can make polarized light. And so one way you can make polarized light is to have an emitter, like a laser, that's set up to have one polarization. Um, and we'll do a little bit of that in the lab this week and observe polarization of the lasers. But, you know, you could take unpolarized light and also make polarized light. And so here's how you could make polarized light. You could take unpolarized light, and I'm just showing it this way. I know I could show E-field in all directions, but I'll just show this polarization and this polarization for simplicity. Here's a polarizer. I pass the polarized, unpolarized light through the polarizer, and I obtain polarized light. It basically killed off this polarization. And in this lab, when you diagram a polarizer, you'll just show it as a film like this that has an arrow like this indicating this is the polarization that'll pass. I could have the polarizer rotated 90 degrees, so now the film is oriented this way, and it would only pass polarization of light this way, blocking the other polarization or other photons, basically, that would be polarized this way. And I could have two films in series. Here's unpolarized light. I could have a first polarizer. This polarization gets through, and then I've got the second polarizer here, which is now 90 degrees rotated such that no light can make it through the system, so it will look completely black. And so on the next slide, you'll see an example of two of these um, films overlapping and where they're 90 degrees rotated, and you can do this in the lab this week, all of a sudden the appearance of them will look black because both polarizations are being blocked. And again, in the PowerPoint version, you could see this is a nice animated video where you've got two polarizers and you're rotating them, and you'll see this switch between partially transparent, which is when it can pass one polarization, and black, where you have two polarized crossed. So how do you think this works? Is it, is it magic? Any ideas in terms of how this might work? So here's how a polarizer works, okay? And I wish someone taught me this when I was in grad school. They just said it just works, okay? So again, here's that picture I talked about for two polarizers. These are uh, two polarizers that are 90 degree crossed, and where they overlap, both polarizations are blocked. And so how do each of these ones work, okay? Well, one way to make a polarizer is to make a wire grid polarizer. And so all it is is basically a grid of wires that are parallel. And the key thing is that the spacing between the wires is less than a wavelength of light to avoid diffraction. Okay? And so it's so small that you don't even get diffraction. And so these, of course, are not easy to make a wire grid, but I'll tell you how you make them typically in a second. But you can also make it using a wire grid if you make the wires small enough. So here's my unpolarized light. All these polarizations of light are propagating. Okay? And they're moving forward. And notice how all the peaks line up, basically, the way they drew this. It's done very nicely in this diagram here. Well, when they hit this wire grid polarizer, only light, which is oppositely oriented to the direction of the wires, gets through. Well, why is that? Okay. Well, imagine I have the wire here. Let's just pick one of the wires. We'll take one of the wires. Here's the wire. Okay. And that wire is full of electrons. Okay. Well, if I had E field in this direction, so in this plane, meaning that when it got to this, it's lined up with the wire. As the E field hits this wire, the E field's moving back and forth. What happens when you put E field on a wire? Well, you know that there's also electrons in the wire, and they will move along the wire with the E field. And we also know that a wire has resistance, and so when this E field hits the wire and causes the electrons to move back and forth, I get current in a wire, I generate heat because I've got ohmic loss, I squared R, where I is the uh, current in the wire. And so this polarization of light will be absorbed by this wire grid polarizer. Light's polarized in this direction, or even in this direction a little bit too, because remember, that's enough to get the electrons oscillating. Why is this polarization not absorbed? Well, for this case, the E field is in this direction. If I have electrons in this metal, how much can they move? Well, if the E field's this way, they can only move a tiny bit. They can't move like they could before, all the way back and forth, giving me lots of current. In this direction, there's no distance for them to move. And so you don't get much current at all, and you get no optical absorption, and this polarization of light passes through on as polarized light. That, essentially, is how a polarizer works. Now, when you look at a conventional polarizer like these films, they don't actually pattern tiny wires on there. That is extremely expensive. It can be done, but it's very difficult to do. Most polarizers use a simpler approach. What they do is they, pick, they take a uh, PVA polymer, okay, 
they dope the polymer with iodine, and that iodine makes the PVC molecules, the polyvinyl alcohol polymer molecules, conductive along their long axis. Then they take this, they melt it, and they stretch it, and then they cool it. Why do they do this? Well, basically what happens is I've got all these conductive molecules because of the iodine doping. They melt it, then they stretch it out. When, it's, when they melted it first, all the molecules are in all sorts of directions. They're random. But if you were to imagine you start to stretch this out, all the molecules would then start to line up, right, as you stretch out this film. Well, if I've stretched them out and lined them up, then and these are conductive, then E-field in this direction would cause the electrons, because these are conductive, to travel back and forth across the molecules. I get conduction. I get absorption of those polarizations of light, where E-field in this direction would not allow enough electron movement because it's, it's no longer along the axis of the molecule, and those would pass through. So this works quite well, and when they make films like this, typically they can get them to be about 40% efficient, meaning that it gives you polarized light, but only 40% of the total light coming into the system gets out. So it's less, you know, theoretically perfect would be would be 50% efficient. Half the polarization of unpolarized light doesn't get through, the other half does, but that's not practically achievable. But 40% is pretty good. And again, this type of polarizer is absorptive. You can also make reflective types, but this is an absorptive type, meaning that it's just optical loss due to I squared R current and a wire type type effects. Now let's talk about the law of malice, uh, which has nothing to do with evil or hate or anything like that. It's actually a law used for, to predict polarization. And it tells us, basically, as you rotate a polarizer, how much it extinguishes one polarization of light. So let's say I have a polarizer here and unpolarized light, and then I get polarized light as it comes through that, and then I have something that I call here an analyzer, meaning it's just a second polarizer that I'm simply going to rotate back and forth between this polarization and this polarization, and then we see how much light comes out here on the other side. So you just measure the intensity you get out the other side. Well, if you want to figure out and predict this, again, you know, you could go all the way from passing the light to not passing the light. We have to remember that even for this polarization of light here, we can represent that as two vectors here, right? And if we look at these and we want to get the resultants of these, it would be this E field cosine of theta, if this is my angle here, and this one here would be sine of theta, okay? So you take those two, then you get your resultant, okay? Well, it's basically the same. It's, they're both basically sinusoidally dependent on their axis of alignment. And so, so we'll come back to that in a second. Okay. Well, I know that if I measure intensity of light, it's proportional to the electric field squared. Okay. So intensity is proportional, is, is proportional to E field squared. And if I look at the amount of light that can get through, how much of this light is aligned with the with the polarizer or out of alignment, well, that's going to be dependent on the cosine of the angle, right? And so it could go, if the polarizer's in this direction, it could be all the way misaligned to the point where it's perfectly aligned, okay? And so if I put this in here, the amount of light getting through or E field absorption is E cosine of theta squared, but if I want to look at light intensity, that's the square of E field, and so it's E naught cosine of theta squared is my intensity, okay? That would transmit. Now, I know that my initial intensity, I0, is, is, is basically starting with the full E field squared. You don't have to worry about the amount of rotation or angle between these things. So that if I divide both sides by that, I just divide by I0 and E0 squared. These are equal, right? I0 equals E0 squared, so I haven't changed my equation. And then I can move I0 to the other side and get rid of the e naughts. I end up with the intensity that gets through the polarizer is equal to the original intensity on the on one side times the cosine squared of the misalignment of angle between the two okay and so I could go from the case where they are perfectly aligned so I'd have a polarizer like this one here and the second polarizer would be lined up such that if I have these two of course and you look at the angle of rotation between them it's zero degrees right well cosine of zero is one and so in that case you'd have 1 squared, and so 1 squared times I0 gives me I0, so all the light would get through in theory. Now, we know polarizers aren't perfect, so you don't get it all through, but it's just showing you, you know, that the, the theoretically perfect case.
Then you can have the case where I have these missile lines. So here's the first polarizer, and then I've got the second polarizer now misaligned with it by 90 degrees, right? And so in that case, cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and so I would get no transmission through this system as I rotated the analyzer to 90 degrees out of phase. Then you could do cosine of 180 degrees. Well, if I went from, you know, 180 degrees, I've come back to the point where it's aligned again, right? So if I go aligned, 90 degrees out of line, and then 90 degrees more, I'm out of, I'm now out of alignment. But what about the fact that cosine of 180 is minus 1? And a, well, it's cosine squared, so you just get minus 1 squared, which gives you 1, and again, you get your transmission. And so this law of malice will predict how much intensity of light gets through two polarizers as you rotate the second one with respect to the first one. Okay, at that point, you can take a break and see if you can answer this question. This is something you should be able to get. And remember that EM, electromagnetic radiation, you know, the things we talk about for visible light apply to other wavelengths of light as well.